So let's go ahead and solve a bunch of simple problems, right? So here it says, let X be a square matrix, right? Consider the following two statements on X. The first statement is that X is invertible, which means X inverse exists, right? That's what, that's what it means when it says X is invertible. The determinant of X is non-zero, okay? So what is it saying? Debt of X is, non, is not equal to zero. Now the question here is, which of the following is true? 1 implies 2, but 2 does not imply 1, 2 implies 1, 1 does not imply 2, so on and so forth. We know that the definition of inverse of x, what is the definition of inverse of x? It is nothing but adjoint of x by debt, sorry, adjoint, adjoint of not a, okay, so I got so used to writing a, right, it's adjoint of x by debt of x, right, if debt of x is not equal to 0, okay. If it is equal to 0, if debt of x is equal to 0, inverse does not exist. Which means both these statements are one and the same. Right? Look at this. If the determinant is non-zero, then x is invertible. If x is invertible, by definition, the determinant is non-zero. Hence, statements 1 and 2 are equal statements. So, option D is the right option here. Very simple, very basic question. If you understand the fact that debt of x should not be equal to 0 for x inverse to exist, you know the answer to it. Right? Very, very simple problem. So now let's go and check out the second problem. Okay. Look at this problem now. Okay. This is an interesting problem. So perform the following operations on this matrix. It says add the third row to the second column and subtract the third column from the first column. Okay. So the determinant of the resultant matrix is. Okay. So first of all, let's look at this matrix itself. Okay. So there are two very interesting sets of properties called elementary. So there are two types of operations called as elementary, there are two very interesting operations called as elementary row operations and elementary column operations, right? These are very important with respect to determinants. These are very important operations with respect to determinants. So I thought I'll explain this, okay? So if you're solving a problem like this, if you were to solve all of this, if you have to solve it numerically, this is going to take a lot of time, okay? So can we solve it faster? So the elementary row and column operations, as far as determinants are concerned, help you solve such problems and to be able to determine the uh, the determinant of this prob uh, of the resultant matrix after these two operations and things like that very very fast. Okay, let's see how to do it. So let's look at the properties themselves first. The first one says that if you swap a row i and row j, so given any matrix, if you swap row i and row j or if you swap column i with column j, any two columns, if you swap, okay, swap basically means you interchange. Similarly, if you interchange two columns, right, then the determinant, then the determinant of the resultant matrix, then the result, then the determinant of the resultant matrix will change in sign, will change in, in just the sign. The value itself will not change, but the sign of the determinant will change by making this row interchanging or row swapping operations or column swapping operations, okay? So if, if you interchange two rows or if you interchange two columns, the resultant determinant of the matrix will change in sign as compared to the original matrix, okay? So by performing these operations, the determinant of the resultant matrix will change in sign. The second operations are like this. Imagine if I have row i, right? If I, if I, ch if I replace row i, with some constant times rho i, where this constant is not equal to 0, or if I take a column j, right, any column j, okay, if I, if I, if I replace this column j with some constant times column j, where this constant is not equal to j, then, then, okay, then the resultant determinant, then the resultant determinant, then the resultant determinant, right, is is obtained by the original determinant multiplied by c multiplied by this constant so you can arrive at the resultant determinant by changing the matrix okay such that you have replaced i throw with some constant times i throw where this constant is not equal to zero or you have replaced a jth column in the matrix with a constant times jth column where the jth column itself is not equal to zero right then the resultant determinant that you get Okay, the resultant matrix determinant that you get is simply the original matrix determinant multiplied by C. Okay, this is a second interesting property. The third interesting property, this is very interesting. If you have row i, 
right if you if you change rho i as rho i plus some constant k times rho j look at this what am i doing i'm replacing rho i with rho i plus some constant times rho j or if i take some column i and if i replace column i with column i plus k times column j okay look at this either way okay here k can also be zero by the way then then the resultant determinant that you get the resultant determinant that you get right will not change will not change so the determinant of the original matrix that you have and the resultant of uh, and the determinant of the resultant matrix that you have after performing this operation the the, the the determinants will be same again all of them you can verify them numerically very easily okay you can verify all of them numerically for some of them you can also create geometric interpretations okay so very very simple stuff right so very simple see if you swap i th the simplest way to remember is this if you swap rows or if you swap columns the determinant will change in sign right if you multiply any row with a constant or any column with a constant the resultant determinant's value will be multiplied by a constant or if you replace a row as a combination of row i plus some constant times row j or a column i as column i plus constant times column j the resultant determinant will not change these are called the elementary row and column operations as far as determinants is concerned and these operations these operations actually help you solve these pro these types of problems very easily now look at this what is it saying add the third row to the second second row so what are we doing so second row equals to second row plus 1 into row 3 that's what we are doing with this operation right now what is this this operation subtract the third column from the first column so first column sorry not row first column so what does this mean first column is equal to first column subtract the third column minus 1 into column 3 that's what these two operations are saying and from the elementary operations this belongs to the third category right by by performing these two operations the determinant does not change and the question here is what is the result what is the determinant of the resultant matrix the resultant of the determin so if this is matrix a if this is matrix a right by performing these two operations the resultant matrix that you get its determinant will be same as debt of a itself now so let, now let's compute debt of a okay very interesting problem right so if you look at debt of a itself look at this if you look at debt of a itself if you look at this column and if you look at this column okay if i multiply this column with 15 i'll get this column look at this 3 into 15 is 45 7 into 15 right 7 into 15 is uh, okay so one second one second so what do i have 15 into third column okay 7 into 15 is 105 13 into 15 13 into 15 is uh, 15 3 is a 45 okay 195 actually there is a small typo in here this one should not be here in this matrix this one should be here i'm sorry this is a small typo in this question so the third row is 13 to 195 not 95 okay now everything works out sorry for that error okay so now look at this now look at this okay now my first column multiplied by 15 multiplied by 15 gives me the third column okay which means which means my column 1 is nothing but my column 1 multiplied by 15 equals to column 3 look at this okay so what if i perform an operation like this what if i say c3 equals to let's see what i do i say c3 equals to c3 minus 15 into c1 now what happens to c3 so my c1 will remain the same 3 7 13 my column 2 remains the same what about column 3 now look at this my column 3 i am making my column 3 as column 3 minus 15 times column 1 so this whole thing will become zero look at this this whole thing becomes zero now because one row again this is a very interesting property if one row or one column equals to zero the debt of the matrix itself is zero again you can verify this manually okay even geometrically okay because this column is zero Okay, look at it from the area of the parallel pipette. Okay, if you think about from the area of the parallel pipette that you get, right? So you can easily see this is where your i hat will go to, this is where your j hat will go to, this is where your k hat will go to, 
right? If you think about this as a linear transformation, your k hat is going to zero zero vector, right? Or k hat is going to origin, which means the area of the parallel pipette is going to be equal to zero, right? So very simple concept here. So because of the because the determinant of this is equal to zero, after performing these operations also, the determinant of the matrix will remain zero. Okay. So to answer this question, okay, you had to know the so of course you can do it brute force you can manually compute and do everything but a better and smarter way to see is look look at the fact that these two rows are multiples so constant times this column equals to this column that's a first fact which means the total determinant of this matrix itself is equal to 0 and by performing these types of operations which fall in type 3 here the determinant does not change so the overall determinant still remains 0 very simple question, right? Nothing very fancy out here. Okay. All you needed to know was the elementary row and column operations. That's all. If you knew this, this problem can be solved in under a minute. Now, let's look at another question. Okay. Look at this question now. If a matrix A is such that it is obtained by multiplying this column vector with this row vector, the determinant of A equals to. Very simple. Actually, this is also very simple. Look at this. So, when, when I multiply these two, what do I get? Remember that this is 3 rows, 1 column and this is 1 row, 3 columns. So, the resultant matrix that I get is 3 rows, 3 columns. 2 into 1 is 1. 2 into 9 is 18. Sorry, 2 into 1 is 2. Sorry, 2 into 5 is 10. Minus 4 into 1 is minus 4. Minus 4 into 9 is minus 36. This is minus 20. This is 7, 63 and 35 right one thing if you notice look at this one thing if you notice carefully this multiply column 1 column 1 multiplied by 9 equals to column 2 so now if i say column 2 if i replace column 2 as column 2 multiplied sorry column 2 plus sorry if i say column 2 equals to column 2 minus 9 times column 1 okay the determinant should not change right because this falls in the third type of transformation right when i do this what happens my first column stays the same. My second column becomes 0. My third column remains the same. Because this whole column has been transformed into a 0 vector. Look at this. This whole column became 0. So, the determinant of this will be equal to 0. Right? Right? Because the determinant of this equals to 0. And we arrive. See, we, we first finished the multiplication. We got this matrix. So, determinant of A will not change because of this fundamental or elementary column transform. Okay, we got this matrix. Now, this matrix determinant is 0 because this whole column is 0. Okay, so the determinant of matrix A itself is equal to 0. Very simple question, nothing very fancy out here. Okay, so now let's go and check out the fourth question, the next question in the sequence. Oh, this is a very interesting question. So, this question says, look at this. Look at this question, it says, this is the matrix I have. Which of the following matrices determinant? Which of the following is the matrix determinant not equal to? So, let's assume this determinant equals to some C. Which of these other matrices does not have the same determinant C? Okay, let's look at each of them. Okay. So, first let's look at B. Actually, the answer is A, but I'll arrive at it by eliminating all the others. Look at this. What is this matrix? In this, how would I arrive at this matrix? Okay. If I take column 2, if I make column 2 as column 2 plus column 1 and if I make column 3 as column 3 plus column 1, 1 plus x, 1 plus y, 1 plus z. This is what I have here. x square plus 1, y square plus 1, z square plus 1. Okay. And we know that because of these column transforms, the determinant does not change. So, if this determinant is equals to c, this determinant also will be equal to c. Now, let's look at this. How did we arrive at this? If you notice the third call, the third row is the same. The third row hasn't changed. If you look at the first row, I can arrive at this first row by saying row 1 equals to row 1 minus row 2. If I, if I make this row 1 equals to row 1 minus row 2 from this. Okay. So, row 1 equals to 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay. X minus Y, X square minus Y square. Similarly, if I make row 2 equals to row 2 minus row 3. Okay, by performing these two operations, I can arrive at this matrix from this matrix. So, this matrix followed by these two operations will give this matrix. And because these operations do not change the determinant, the determinant of this matrix and the determinant of this matrix is the same. 
Similarly, let's look at this matrix now. The third row is the same. This third row is same as this third row. If I perform row 1 as row 1 plus row 2, right? And if I perform row 2 as row 2 plus row 3, okay? By performing these two valid row elementary operations, I can arrive at this matrix from this matrix. And we know that these row transformations or elementary row operations does not change the determinant. So, even the determinant of this matrix, this matrix and this matrix, all of them are equal to the determinant of this matrix. Which means, this matrix is no more, because this is the only thing that is left out, right? Right? That's why the determinant of this matrix is not equal, not necessarily equal to the determinant of this. If you notice, here I have done a proper transformation here. Look at this. Here, what have I done? My column 3, okay. Okay, so I can, I can actually write this also x square y square plus z okay so this transformation which of the following is not equal to okay so we have eliminated b d and c so we are left with a okay simple very very simple way of solving it it is better to eliminate b c d because we know which transformations are guaranteed to result in the same determinant from the row see we know that if you perform operations like this the resultant determinant will not change so it is better to find wherever those operations have been performed, eliminate those and whatever we are left with would be the answer. Okay, very simple question again. As long as you know the elementary operations. Now, let's look at this question now. Okay, this is an interesting question. Okay, so let's look at this question. It says, let A, B, C, D be n by n matrices, each with non-zero determinant, which means they are invertible. If A, B, C, D equals to 1 or identity matrix, look at this. If A, B, C, D equals to identity matrix or 1. Okay, sometimes identity matrix is also written as 1. Then what is the value of B inverse? Okay, let's solve it. Okay, here you have to be careful, right? So, if what I am going to do first, I am going to say A, B, C, D. I am going to multiply this. I am going to post multiply it with D inverse. I am also going to post multiply this with D inverse. Okay, we know that D into D inverse is identity. Which means they both cancel out. You can imagine that they are cancelling out. And I into any matrix is that matrix itself. So, what do I have now? So, I have A, B, C. See, remember A, B is not equal to B, A. Okay. Which means post multiplication is not same as pre multiplication with matrices. That's why you have to be very careful where you are multiplying. Okay. So, I multiplied D inverse on the right side here and also on the right side. I can't multiply D inverse on the right side here and D inverse on the left side here. That's not valid. Okay. You have to be careful. Okay, because matrix multiplication is not commutative. Okay, does we have seen this property earlier, right? Now, now let's see. Similarly, what can I do? Can I write A, B? Now, if I multiply both sides by C, post multiply both sides by D inverse, by C inverse, sorry. So, look at this. I'm multiplying by C inverse here. I'm multiplying by C inverse here. So, they both cancel out. So, what am I left with? A, B equals to D inverse, C inverse. Okay, now if I pre-multiply everything with A inverse, look at this. I'm pre-multiplying here. I am multiplying on the left side. Here also I will pre-multiply and get A inverse, D inverse, C inverse. Pre-multiplication, see if you are multiplying on the left side on the LHS, you have to multiply on the left side itself on the LHS. Now we know A inverse A equals to identity, so I can ignore this. So what do I have now? Now I have B equals to A inverse, D inverse, C inverse. Okay, And we have seen this formula, right? B inverse is the inverse of the whole thing. We have seen that B inverse is the inverse of this whole thing. And we have seen a property. We have seen this property that AB inverse, AB inverse equals to B inverse A inverse. And we have also argued about it geometrically. So, what will be the inverse of this whole thing? The inverse of this whole thing is C. Because C inverse inverse is C. D inverse inverse is D. A inverse inverse is A. So, what is B inverse enough? B inverse is C, D, A which is option B. Okay. So, that there are only two steps here. You have to re be careful whether you are post multiplying or pre multiplying. Very, very important because AB is not equal to BA and you have to know this, know this fact that AB inverse equals to B inverse A inverse. That's why the properties of many matrices are extremely important in solving problems. But it's a straightforward problem, not very hard here.